I am really excited for our guest today. We have Kathleen Osgood from Ronin Network. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for having me. In any industry, first to market is first to fail. And to clarify, we're not saying a failure. Like, I think there's like, it's there very exciting. Like, there yeah. have been failures, but now we can position ourselves as learn from us. And we'll be the first right. to acknowledge we've made mistakes. But now that mistake is valuable to you as a game developer coming into the space. And we can tell you what you're out for. One thing we say a lot is like Axie walked so Web3 Gaming can run. You know, yeah. it's like Axie learned from those mistakes and now you're getting to build on both the successes and the things to avoid as you build a repeatable infrastructure with Ronin, right? So when I first got to Sky Mavis and Ronin, we actually got hacked two weeks later. Oh, so it was, it was it was very exciting. And then all of a sudden it's like, what the fuck did I just sorry. do? But the way that that hack was handled internally and externally and even compared to what was going on in the space... It's like, this is the right team to be on. And so we leveraged resources we had internally. We built out an entire B2B team as to how we support projects coming into Ronin, really narrowed in on our value proposition and how we are unique compared to the other blockchains out there and started building this curated ecosystem of noisemakers and actual true gamers and projects that when a new project comes in, they have all of these resources, both from Sky Mavis and the community and players to tap into and really take off. What does the Web3 version of game publishing look like? The amount of like, capital being injected into these games from both the player base as well as the speculators is it's different. Right. Like you have to be community facing as a founder in order to get off the ground. And it's our belief that in Web3, this isn't a given. Like the Ronin effect is absolutely not given. But it's there for teams that know how to tap into it appropriately and have all the right pieces. If there's ways for them to play off of one another, that's fucking cool. And it actually yeah. just makes everybody more successful if we're able to work in sync as opposed to just like, oh, now there's more competition. Thinking yeah. like that is not the way right now in the infancy of what everybody's building right now. Being competitive with one another in the same ecosystem is not the move. It's like, how do we each amplify one another? What are the growth levers? Like, what is the recipe? What is the playbook? Boots on the ground, event meetups, right. you know, leveraging all of our community leads in these emerging markets, exposing creators to new projects early. So when we make that announcement, it takes over your Twitter timeline. Ideally, hopefully it brings in new users. And that is our user acquisition strategy for then Kydro. So Kydro now all of a sudden can tap into new users that Ragnarok brought in. But Ragnarok simultaneously is tapping into some of the users that Kydro brought in. So it's this game all based on reciprocity and ensuring that each unit is playing their part and bringing something valuable to the table for everyone to tap into. And that's the machine yeah. that we've created that, again, you just can't replicate. Cross promo. I mean, in like mobile and in traditional gaming, like cross promo between games, like Tale is old as time. Like that's been, you know, probably... 15 years plus that that's been part of the strategy, but it doesn't look like what Ronin cross promo between your ecosystem games looks like. And of course there's this like cross promotion between games, but then you also add in that they have an asset that also transfers like mm -hmm. from this game and this asset gives you an asset in this game. And like, maybe that does happen to an extent within the cross promotion of web two games, but it's a different sense of belonging, I think. Mm -hmm that people are not used to in traditional gaming that Web3 really enables that makes this, what we have here and these strategies much more powerful and the ones that work the best. It's like you have now some of these KOLs may be incentivized via token or these KOLs aren't even being paid by these games or even being paid by Sky right. Mavis. They just own the assets. Right. So right. now, you know, I go and buy a bunch of these assets from Kydro I'm now tweeting about Kydro. I can have direct impact on the assets that I purchase. So that, I think that skin in the game, that's a huge differentiator because with traditional influencer marketing, it's like super clear to any sort of savvy gamer that consumes a lot of gaming content. It's just like, this is a paid promotion. This is organic coverage. And there's this gray area in Web3 of like, there's an incentive for these content creators to cover the project because they're invested in it one way or another. But it's not like, here's your paycheck. Talk about me for two weeks. Thanks yeah. very much. Like, and they put it in the bank. So, yeah, Web3 is more transactional in a sense from a monetary perspective. But 
less transactional because I don't essentially have to go to these content creators to like force them. They can make right. their own decisions and still see the same amount of value abstraction from our game or from someone else's game as if we were to pay them. They can do it on their own. It's a lot of like self like stepping up on their own that we may not see in traditional web too because of the ability to own these assets and the easy access they have to do so. Yeah. We were talking to Gio and he described the Sky Mavis community, X community as like a political campaign. And I think that's like very, very I think it's a pretty, it's it's fairly accurate, right? It's the same fervor that you have about how you identify yourself and how you want to see change in the world. Yeah. A lot of these teams as of recent are coming to the table and are like, I don't want anything. I just want to come to Ronin because I know you can mint out Kydro in nine seconds for $2 million. I know you can help Pixels launch and end up at 4 billion FTV. And that has been part of the strategy is like prove ourselves so that we don't have to give away millions and millions of dollars of grants because these users know what, what we bring to the table is actually worth more right. than just grants. And the smart ones understand that we also still do invest. We do do grants. We do do incentive-based grants as well. And it's not your typical VC, let's try and abstract as much as we can here. I come from traditional VC and I know the power VCs bring to the table and it's absolutely necessary, but it's the ones that acknowledge that we are more than that. They do end up being substantial because it's this mentality of winning together that is necessary. And that's basically what Web3 is and what Axie you know, brought to the table. It's winning together. These people owning these assets because we allow them to in this new paradigm of a relationship. And then they bring skills and expertise to the table and help grow the entire pie. And that's how our agreements are structured as well. And we also have a huge horde of investors that are begging to invest in Ronin-based games because the VCs also understand what Ronin can do for their investments. Mm -hmm. So if we're to partner with someone, we have really great investors line out the door, lined up, ready to also invest either with Sky Mavis or next to Sky Mavis for these games. Yeah. And it sounds like part of what you're saying with the value proposition of Ronin is like you guys have built such strong proof of concept with the ways that you can bootstrap growth and the services side of Ronin to be overly simplistic that you don't have to lean as hard on the like, here's this bag of cash or bag of tokens mm -hmm. that maybe some of your competitors do. Do I understand yeah. that correctly? Yeah, because this bag of tokens is probably worth nothing if you're not able to actually gain traction and then you're just spending the bag of tokens into oblivion. Whereas people understand the actual monetary value of what we could bring to the table is it's tangible. You can actually see that through our partnerships and through our relationships and what that has ended up. But also now we've positioned ourselves where if you need cash, we have a whole network of investors that knows we can deliver. Mm -hmm. We will ensure that you have money. Like, whether that be us investing in you or us bringing investors to the table. Right. And now that we've built that credibility, it's easier and easier to get amazing developers working with us. There's also some teams that we've just seen operate without investment that are absolutely crushing it. That we're like, can we please give you some money? And can you please come to Ronin? Because we know that even with slight capital injection, this could be insane. Yeah, so there's a couple of those teams. And everyone's really different, but we're able to get creative. And I think that's what I love about my job is I lead all of these negotiations and these investments. And I'm very creative myself. I uh, paint. And a lot of when I paint, it's like processing how I want to do deals. Mm -hmm. Like it's actually. <laughs> but the classic that. artist just processing how they do BD. <laughs> yes. But also, you know, I'm a very emotional person. I think that's one of my strong suits and how I form relationships and do deals and end up in a position where everybody's happy. Psychology of things align so that everyone just like feels really good about the relationship. And those are the best relationships. You know, yeah. you don't want to enter a relationship where you feel taken advantage of. Yeah. No one wants to do that. For sure. If anyone wants to get a hold of you, how can they do that? Twitter is probably the best. Follow me. I'm Cosgood, K-O-S-G-O-O-O-D on Twitter. Well, then also give Ronin a follow, Sky Mavis a follow, Axie. It's really fun to get involved in our ecosystem. Don't say anything to me on Twitter that's mean, but like I don't care at this point. <laughs>
Awesome. Amazing. Kathleen, thank you so much for making the time today. This was a great interview. I think uh, hopefully this is opening the eyes of what Ronin ecosystem is building and the opportunities for game developers. Thank you so much for joining the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Stay tuned. We have a really exciting couple of months ahead. Talk soon.